Truth is worth it. Worth what? Well, fill in the blank. It's about being in the right, not in error, removed from the path of disorder. Truth should be objective, not subjective and based on our own opinion. It must come from a source outside of ourselves. It's true that 2 plus 2 is 4. Gravity exists. The last Jedi was dog poo. Point being, why would anyone purposely live falsely and fully aware of it? Start disagreeing with any of these examples and you're going to have a rough time. Nothing should be more important than the truth in regards to faith, since eternity is at stake, not just bad test scores. So we probably should get our faith right. So anyone stating my religion is true is actually a heck of a statement. It implies everyone who isn't in your faith is wrong. To be a part of that faith is to be living in truth. Many religions have this position, especially Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, except for witnesses, it's an identifier and a phrase. Anyone who's a JW will be constantly telling themselves they're in the truth, living the truth, a part of the truth. You're in the know. JW leadership really hammers this home, printing multiple articles and engraving this phrase within witness culture they created. So being in the truth is synonymous with being an active Jehovah's Witness. So what makes them the truth? You can't just claim it. I'm the truth because I said so. This is a logical fallacy of circular reasoning. It's subjective and more so self-authenticating. I speak for God because I said so. Nope, doesn't work. Now one might say, but the prophets in the Bible said that. Yeah, but the prophets had supernatural confirmation. Giving an example and a mistake many Christians make, they'll say the Bible is God's word because it says so. Kinda, but outside confirmation is needed, like the historical resurrection of Christ, fulfilled prophecy and the like. The Bible's claim is, I'm written by God and I can prove it, not I'm written by God just because I said so. The latter is faulty logic. So for witnesses to be the truth, it can't just be because the leaders say so. That would look awfully suspicious. Therefore, the group offers evidence that supposedly confirms their statement. It breaks down to pretty much these five topics of evidence. Using the name Jehovah, teaching biblical truths, the kingdom message, the preaching work, and the people. Is this the objective evidence that Jehovah's Witnesses are the one true religion? Or is it really just self-authentication and circular reasoning? Let's find out. Using the name Jehovah. It's no surprise JWs are all about that Joe. The claim, we're the only people using God's personal name. Therefore, we are the truth. Except that's not true at all. Many other faiths use Jehovah in songs, banners, and have so since its creation. When the word Jehovah first appeared, it was by Christian scholars in the 16th century, hundreds of years before the JW religion began. So the claim goes nowhere. You might hear the follow-up saying, well, we use it more. To which I would respond, so? Think about this. Let's say you have two brothers. One loves his father, the other wants his father dead. Brother number one calls him dad, father, sir. He knows his name, tells other people about him, but personally prefers dad. Now, brother number two only calls his father by his first name, also lies about him, steals from his wallet, and is generally disrespectful, all to have personal gain. Now, would anyone in their right mind say, well, brother number two was the true son because he used his father's personal name more than any other? No! God's name isn't about the phonetics and the usage, it's about identifying the character and nature of the being you're referring to. Now, witnesses will use Acts 15, 14, a people for his name. Yeah, name meaning God's nature, his trustworthiness, his character, the promises he's made. Now all nations are being blessed because he fulfills his word, living up to his name, and now has a people who live it. God isn't communicating, I just want a people who use my personal name a whole bunch. Now witnesses will say, but it's more personal to use his name. No, it's actually worse. God wants us to call him father. He's invited us to be his adopted children. Picture God explaining, hey, you're in my house now. I've got you. You're in my care. You don't have to call me Mr. Joe. You can just call me dad. That's lovely. However, witness leadership wants to step in and say, no, you call him Mr. Joe. That's what a real healthy relationship would do. Ugh. Look, usage of the name Jehovah isn't evidence, just leadership bragging about something which is based on preference. You want to use it, fine, but that doesn't mean you're the truth. Teaching the truth. This is a big one. Jehovah's Witness is saying, we're the only people teaching biblical truth, accurate knowledge, the spiritual food, straight from Jehovah, then to Jesus, then to his channel, then to the watchtower, then right to your spiritual stomachs. Yum. Problem with this statement, what they mean by biblical truths is really just leadership's interpretation of the Bible. At first glance, it might appear legit, but the majority of the time, all you'll get is writers cherry-picking verses or ignoring the context of the text. 
No matter the topic or verse, the faithful slave will tell you what accurate Bible knowledge is, even if the scripture is teaching something completely different. Example, John 10, 16 through 17. I have other sheep not of this fold. An honest read says, okay, Jews and Gentiles both become one flock under one shepherd, Jesus. Jesus comes from the Jews first, then the message goes to the Gentiles, all nations. Gotcha. Which is absolutely a repeated theme in the New Testament. But the JW leadership says, no, that's two different classes of Christian who become one flock. Kind of. But the earthly one is dependent on the heavenly flock, and they're ruled over by them, like a shepherd. So not just Jesus. Oh, and this is a Bible truth, because we said so. Ugh. No! This is a complete lack of hermeneutics or exegesis, just grabbing words to form their own doctrine. Now, there are many dozens of witness beliefs that contradict the Bible, and if you want them broken down, accompanied by beautiful artwork and a voiceover with a perturbed disposition, I can recommend a channel. Plus, the Bible gives you a test to see if someone is speaking the truth. In Deuteronomy 18.22, you can ignore anyone claiming they're speaking for God as the one source of truth when an event they prophesy doesn't come true. I don't think the governing body is going to be pulling these failures out of the closet to bolster the validity of their religion anytime soon. Anyways, this idea that they're teaching accurate knowledge is just another fallacy. It's just JW Headship repeating, Our interpretation is correct because we speak Bible truths based on our own interpretation, and that interpretation is correct because we speak Bible truths based on... You get it. The Kingdom Message. Ah, the good news of the kingdom will be preached through all the inhabited earth. Just preaching what the first century Christians did, telling about this new government God's going to make where everyone will be happy and you'll be playing with animals and this isn't what the apostles taught. The good news they were spreading was about Jesus and what he did. Just read through the New Testament. It's obvious the emphasis of the message is forgiveness of sins. Look at Acts 2.38 or Acts 26.18. It's all about sin. This is the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Paul is so clear, and this good news is of the utmost importance. In Colossians, he even spells out what this kingdom message is, for he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son. We have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. That's the good news, Christ's death and resurrection for our sins. Yet the witness version is all about a new paradise earth with lots of palm trees where you can see granny again and have pet tigers. But that's not the message Christ wanted to get out. It was all about him. Just go to a JW cart sometime and see how long it takes them to talk about Christ's death and resurrection. They'll brush past the core message and instead focus on what's more appealing to the masses. They don't understand the gospel offends those who don't believe it. It's not supposed to be all warm and fuzzy. It's saying, hey, sinner, repent, humble yourself, and follow Jesus. You're not going to hear that at the door Saturday morning. Their good news kingdom message isn't accurate. It's contrary to the Bible's. And if you have a quick read of Galatians chapter 1, let's just say God isn't handing out a truth medal to JWs anytime soon. The preaching work. The true staple of their religion and what Jehovah's Witnesses are known for. The door-to-door -door ministry. But does this make them the truth? Think, this tactic was borrowed from early 20th century direct sales. During an economic and manufacturing boom, many companies saw it cheaper to use people instead of storefronts, especially when they worked on commission. It's an easy way to sell, and usually the products aren't that great. JWs use this tactic as proof, but it's not. Look, the goal of preaching is to spread the message and to convert people. Some churches build orphanages, homeless outreach centers, neighborhood programs, or have missionaries. So the message is being preached, and dare I say, in far more effective ways. And I know some witnesses will say, going door to door, that's an example of true love. Therefore, we're the true faith. But your ministry isn't solely out of love for your fellow man. You have a stake in it too. It's a bit of selfishness. If you don't go, you don't get salvation. Which is also contrary to scripture, as Romans 3.28 says one is saved apart from any work. Real love comes purely out of desire and sacrifice, not need. And no matter how impassioned you are about your faith, zealousness doesn't equate to truth. And sadly, this isn't something new. Door-to-door -door ministry isn't evidence that they're in the truth. It's just a cheap and easy way to get the message out, and not optional if you're a member. This also goes into what they call the greatest educational work in history. By educational work, all they're referring to is the preaching work and spreading of magazines, the Watchtower and Awake. Now, witnesses do print. A lot. But that doesn't automatically make them the truth. Just proves they spend their money on a bunch of really big printers. The argument is basically, our religion is going worldwide handing out flyers. This is evidence we're correct. Afraid not. The church has been united in the mission of spreading the gospel worldwide and printing Bibles in multiple languages, teaching people about Christ and his kingdom, and doing so for hundreds of years before Russell was even born. 
JWs are bragging about something that's already been done. Besides, Jesus never said, they'll know you by the size of your printing capability. This is, again, self-authentication. We're right because we print lots of magazines. So, Morbins could easily just say, we're the truth. Look at our temples. Muslims, we're the truth. Look at our pilgrimage. Scientologists, we're the truth because L. Ron Hubbard wrote more science fiction than anyone. Plus, we have Maverick. You like Maverick, right? This is just another task they make their members partake in, then paraded as goodness. Yet the Bible warns in 2 Corinthians 11.15, watch out for those masquerading as servants of righteousness. The preaching work is JW leadership creating a category of truth, then filling it and pawning it off as evidence. Sure, it might be impressive, but it's still man-made and not dependent on God's blessing. Long last, the people themselves. The evidence claim goes... Besides using the divine name, preaching accurate knowledge, our kingdom message, and all the preaching work, really have a gander at our members. Truly, they are God's people. See how righteous they are, how loving, how well-dressed, non-smokers, non-worldly, and won't be celebrating pagan holidays? Proof that Jehovah's Witnesses are the truth. Watchtower? Except using people as validation is also manufactured as the members don't have an option not to obey. If you start smoking and celebrating a birthday, you're out. Disfellowshipped. All your friends and family will psychologically abuse you forever if need be, unless you obey. Leadership using the behavior of their members as evidence is absurd. Imagine a parent saying, my children are just the best kids ever. Truly, this is evidence that God has blessed my family. Of course, if they step out of line, I beat them without mercy or compassion, and also threaten to abandon them forever on the side of a busy highway. Oh, I just love my little angels. So no matter what it is, the attendance, the preaching work, the rule following, it all exists under do it or we'll hurt you. This again is self-authenticating. You starting to see a pattern here? Now I've heard JWs argue John 13, 34. They'll know you because of the love you have for one another. Lots of faiths have love and in spades. But Jesus isn't using this as a way to find true believers, but identifying false ones. True faiths start with knowing the true Christ and God's word. The group you worship with is secondary. What matters is, are they following the real Jesus and have a desire to grow in a relationship with God by loving him and others? But leadership can't have that. You need them. And they shove this line to the minds of every witness. We are the truth. No one else. If we are to have Jehovah's favor and blessing as individuals, we must support his organization and accept adjustments in our understanding of the scriptures. No, no, this is horrible. They're really preaching, you want God to be happy with you? You better work for us and get new members and accept any changes we make without issue. Doesn't matter if the Bible says something different, we are the truth. Sick. Last example, and just pull back the view. Imagine some dude claiming, I'm the truth. God's final messenger. And to prove that, please take note of how many times we say Yahweh per hour. Also our title, True Followers of Yahweh. It says it right there. Pretty telling. Most important, my Bible teaching, which might seem like I'm ripping verses out of context, but I'm the true messenger of God, so everything I say is right, even after it's been adjusted. Then there's the message I bring, which says all of you must bow down to me and eat bananas if you want to enter heaven. Oh, and lest we forget the amount of emails my followers send daily to spread the news, which they do, 20 hours a day, or face punishment. No greater preaching work in history. And gosh darn it, look how well-behaved and zealous my followers are, except those being disciplined. See, I'm truly God's messenger. Welcome to the truth. Banana? So, are Jehovah's Witnesses the truth? Decide for yourself, but there really isn't actually any proof. What leadership uses as confirmation is just crafted by their own invented rules. There's nothing supernatural play or anything that screams, this can't possibly be man-made. It's an invented religion, using the parts of the Bible they like just to point people to their group to get right with God. Real faith isn't blind. It's coming to a conclusion based on a reasonable examination of the evidence. And well, doesn't look good. The Bible's job and that of Christians is to direct people's attention, not towards an organization, but to Christ. He is the one who died for sins. It's his word that doesn't pass away. It's his preaching work that changed the world. And it's by his name, the name of Jesus, which is the only name under heaven by which we must be saved. The title of the truth doesn't belong to an organization. It belongs only to the Son of God. If you want to know true peace and have your sins washed forever, to know God, to know real truth, it's not a where, it's a whom. Only he is the truth.